Hello everyone, thank you so much for pressing play and joining me for this video. During this video, I'm going to read um, all of the book of Jude. It's a very short book in the Bible. If you haven't read it, please do so. Um, this book is a warning to look out for narcissists among us. Jude refers to them as scoffers. That's what the Bible calls them as scoffers. But those who we refer to as narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, these are not new people. They're murderers, liars, ungodly. And the Bible in John 8, 44 refers to them as the children of Satan. Okay. It's important that we understand that these people are here and they're always going to be here until the return of Christ. And in fact, now we're noticing that they are increasing in numbers because the, the path to darkness, people enjoy it. It's a wide road and the numbers will multiply. Unfortunately, the goal of a narcissistic person is just to um, the demons that rule over them. The goal is to turn other people into narcissistic people, what you refer to as narcissists, but they're just trying to accumulate more scoffers, right? People who are on the path way to destruction. So as they go along in life, they are like animals who are just on the instinct that Satan has given to them. And they're just responding. Um, they're just acting instinctively from the evil that is within them. So anyway, without me going on and rambling, let me read the book of Jude. I will insert, you know, what I have to say during the reading, um, but please follow along if you can. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, Although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. Listen to that. They have secretly slipped in among you. This means they're coming in a disguise. They're not representing them, their true selves. Okay. They're pretending to be someone else. They're pretending to be you. That's why we talk about um, them mirroring you, especially in the beginning to getting your good graces. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. And I want to point out too, that this is Jews referring to the church, referring in these people. This is why you find so many scoffers in the church. Their goal is to pervert the church pervert the image, okay, of the church so that no one else will become a follower of Christ. They want people to deny Christ. This is their goal. I'm going to continue reading. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. These are the angels also who are responsible for mating with mankind and creating what we've known as the Nephilim which were a sort of demonic giant, right? And so you go back into the book of Genesis and read about the Nephilim. I want you guys to Google it and so that you can do your own study and research. Let me continue. 
In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. We don't talk about this. It's hard for people to accept it because we want to embrace everything and everyone. But even for ourselves, we need to look and make sure we're not um, walking in the ways of sin and darkness, which includes sexual immorality and perversion. Okay. These people, I'm continuing. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, this these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Okay? So narcissistic people are, they behave like irrational animals. This is why you see them repeating the same patterns of behavior, even the same stories over and over and over again. And, and, and this is why um, they argue in circles because they are absolutely irrational, but this is a part of their instinct, their makeup, right? As the children of Satan, they are irrational. Satan is irrational. He believes that he can rule the world in a way, in such a way to take over even God's children. That is irrational thinking. His ego is inflated. So are narcissistic people. And although he has deceived deceived himself, he can't see it that way. They can't see that they are deceived. They are only focused on their end goal, which will never um, come to pass. Okay, because in the end, God is in control and he wins. The Bible tells us so. All right, continuing. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. I'll put the link in the description for the video I made about Cain versus Seth. These people come through the line of Cain. Their behaviors are inherited from Cain. All right. They operate in the same way. If you're looking for evidence that they've been here and been walking among us before um, and now, you can go back into Genesis and read the story of Cain to see. Cain, if you notice, was not even mentioned as a son of Adam. He was not included in the genealogy. Right. Because he is a son of Satan. Narcissistic people are children of Satan. Again, John eight forty four. study, study for yourselves. So what you're being told by pop psychology, it's all fine and dandy. But if you want the real answers and you want to know what's going to happen and how God feels about it, you got to get in the Bible and read. It's that it's not new. I'll continue. These people are blemishes at your love feast. So when you fellowship, okay, they're eating with you without the slightest qualm because so many people are blinded by their um, deceptive behavior. They are shepherds who feed themselves who are all about profit and numbers, right? 
big buildings and fancy cars and millions of dollars of houses. Okay. They don't have to live that way. There are so many people in the body of Christ that can be taken care of. And I don't care what anyone says that it's okay. People will argue with me. It's okay for them to live lavishly. It is not okay. It's not when you have hungry and homeless people and you you're driving a near a, a half million dollar car. There's something wrong with that. And you consider yourself a servant of Christ. Christ was very humble. Christ um, had was God in the flesh. So Christ could have come in the best of everything and lived in the best of everything. But that was not the choice that he made. And then the disciples, they told you, um, you know, follow me as I follow Christ is what Paul said. And so um, if you're following Paul and you're following Christ, um, th- this is not the way it should look. You should not be um, feeding yourself as a shepherd. You should be feeding the flock, sharing with those God have had that with those that God put in your path to look over, to watch over. All right, I'm going to continue. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit. You know them by their fruit. So they don't have fruit. Without fruit and uprooted twice dead. Twice dead. Okay. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. What is the fate of someone who is a scoffer? The fate is blackest darkness forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. I want to also insert, for those of you who are okay, are okay with it, I would encourage you to read the book of Enoch. Okay? It's a really good book. Um, and it fills in some of the, um, I think some of the things that uh, answer some of the questions that you may have about Genesis, especially. Okay? So let me continue. Here's Enoch's prophecy. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are, listen, grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Okay, love bombing is the word that's used in pop psychology. So they love bomb you, make you feel good about yourself, puff you up, okay, for their own advantage so that they can toy around with you, so that they can take advantage of you, take things from you, right? Because the the enemy comes in, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but they can't just walk in doing that. They have to come in and flatter you, make you feel good about yourself, boost up your ego, feed that that pride. That's why we've got to get rid of that pride. You have to keep pride under control. Deal with it every single day. If not, the narcissistic person is going to use that to his or her advantage, puffing you up, love bombing you, right? Love bombing is only effective if you are taken taken back or, excuse me, entertained by flattery. Once you see flattery and know it, um, which is also called love bombing, 
then you become repelled by it, right? So now hopefully many of you know that sign early on. Someone who's always trying to, oh, you're this, oh, you're that, and and constantly, you know, um, trying to make you, you can feel it. They're trying to, uh, you can feel it kind of connecting and making you feel prideful and haughty, all right? That is um, the tool that they use to get into the door so that they can take advantage of you and everyone around you. I'll continue. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you. Proverbs 16 talks about that, right? The things that the Lord hates, um, the seven, six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable. And one of them is to bring in confusion, right? And strife among God's people, dividing them. So they come in to divide you. They are the ones who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith, And praying in the Holy Spirit. You must pray in the Holy Spirit. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Here's your job during this time before the Lord's return. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. You've got to, in order to do that, you guys, you've got to expose narcissistic people. But you pray through the Holy Spirit about how to do that. Each one is different. Okay? Um, But you want to use wisdom. But you definitely have to expose them. You can't. Just brush over it. When they cross your path, is for a reason. Read Ephesians 5, 8 through 13. Okay? So expose them. Save others. Snatch them from the fire by exposing the darkness. Right? You carry the light within. And when you walk into a room, you light it up. It consumes the darkness. It exposes the darkness, okay? To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Playtime is over. Making it just about you and your situation is over. It is not just about you and what happened to you. It is about other people who need to hear what happened. They need to know that these people exist so that they do not fall prey to narcissistic people. And oftentimes the only way for them to hear is through your testimony, through your story of what happened to you. You are allowed to tell your story. Okay. Some of you know things about them that will get them placed in prison. And you're just withholding it while they're hurting other people. You're going to be responsible for that. You're going to be responsible for what you don't say. Because when you're quiet and you're silent, then you're a participant in the darkness. So hear me out clearly. You're going to save others by opening up your mouth. You got to say something. You've got to be a representation of Christ. And Christ exposed the darkness. Now, whether or not people listen, that's not your job to make them listen. It is your job to put the information out there. And let me close here. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy.
To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. I hope this was helpful. Please leave your comments below. Please keep your eyes open and please help others to awaken through your testimony. Goodbye.